Today, I attended Austerity and Us, a conference discussing the economic crisis. The event brought together activists from across Brighton and Hove. I took the opportunity to speak to members of Hands Off Hove Park and Free University Brighton about their respective projects and why they became involved. Well, there's a plan, um, a proposal to turn Hope Park School into an academy school and um, as a parent of two daughters at the school, I'm not in favour of that. Um, I think it's a distraction from the school's overall purpose, which is to provide a high standard of learning for the children. Um, academy schools um, are... Uh, academy schools apply a business ethos to the way that the school is run and I don't agree with that. I think that the best interest of the children and their learning should be at the heart of any school provision. I think my decision to get involved in this campaign is probably personal and political. It's very personal because it's my children that are at that school and I care passionately about the kind of education and the kind of ethos that that education is provided within. So that goes right to the heart of, of me as a parent, <laughs> which is one of my most important roles in my life. Um, but the wider political agenda where assets that are owned by all of us, i.e. our very schools, are being hived off to unknown, unaccountable um, trustees, which are the people that would run this school if it's taken out of local authority control. We've no idea who they are. We don't elect them and we don't have any way of, of getting rid of them or going to a higher authority because the only other higher authority is the Department for Education, which is wholly committed to this academy's agenda at present and it's highly politicised for that reason. Um, so yeah, I'm very much against that short-term political agenda that is at the heart of the academy's programme and that's very much a part of why I'm involved. Yes, I did see a problem and wanted to not solve it but to address it or offer something alternative really. Um, so I, my own experience of education, I've got a couple of degrees my first degree was in electronics and we did a module on economics and what I was taught in economics at, uh, through my uh, degree was, was very much cap from a capitalist point of view and every, every other alternative economic theory was quite ridiculed um, and I had done that enough reading to know that actually that wasn't the whole picture. So I from quite a young age began to question what I was taught at university and so began to look, and, you know, look at the alternatives. So I do, I do think there is, a, there is a whole gap there in education and you know, people can't often find what they want to learn. So a lot of people do like self-learning. So all we're doing really with the free university is bringing people together who have common interests and actually letting them explore in a facilitated way uh, their own education progress, I guess. I think there's something about Brighton in that it's, uh, there's a lot of content here. There's a lot of activism, there's a lot of alternative stuff going on, it's an alternative movement. So yes, it fits in very well with that and it's something that the Free University can tap into. A lot of what um, we publicise is stuff that's going on already, so as long as it's free and educational, I advertise it. So there's a, uh, really it's just about putting stuff in one place as well as adding to it. But the Free University movement is, um, is going on across the world. There's about seven or eight free university type projects in the country, all in very different places like Manchester, Edinburgh, uh, Lincoln. So I don't think it's just about Brighton. I think that there's an appetite and an interest for it around the world.